If you're a creator, your last few weeks in isolation have probably looked a lot like mine. This is your fault. Hope you're aware of that. You know, editing lots of projects, getting a ton of work done, and really just making the most of your time. Right? For real though, you've probably been doing a lot of editing. So let's talk about some techniques you can use to speed up that process and do even more editing. So one of the most important things you need to have for a good edit is actually good writing. And this is a bit of an exaggeration, as sick as this little leather notebook is, I tend to do my planning for videos in the Notes app. Before I even import any footage into Premiere to start editing with, I always write down a ton of ideas in a Notes document, just different ideas about structure, the mood and pacing that I'm going for, any transition ideas, that I might have for the video. For example, for my Faces of NYC travel film, here's all of the planning that I did in the Notes app beforehand. After I've done that and I've actually started editing in Adobe Premiere, one thing that I'll do really frequently is use markers throughout the timeline to make little notes to myself for things I might wanna remember later, different ideas pertaining to that spot in the sequence. And this is something that I'll do for like creative ideas for a travel video edit. So I might make a marker between two shots and say, let's make this transition here, or maybe I think this shot could be a little bit faster. Maybe it should drag out a little bit longer, but I also do this for tutorials. So if we look at my timeline for this video, when I edit this A-roll clip together, what I'm gonna do is go through and use markers to mark every point that I need to have an additional B-roll clip in here. So like a screen recording to show you what I'm doing, or maybe mark and describe kind of a graphic that I want to make to put in later. And finally, if I'm editing like a travel video or a cinematic sequence, one thing that I might do is take the song that I'm going to use for that project, put it on the timeline before I start editing and go through and mark the important parts of the song. So where the pacing of the song might change, where there's a big build, there's a quiet segment of it. And then another thing that I'll do is use text layers to mark where I want certain sequences to be. This really gives me a good way to visualize how long different sequences are so that when I start putting clips on the timeline, I have an idea of what, what space they need to fill when I'm done. Just writing these things down so you have a basic idea of what you're doing once you actually start cutting clips is gonna save you a ton of time and headache later on. But come on in a little closer here, damn. And we can talk about a few ways that you can speed up your editing once you're actually in Premiere cutting up your clips. Now there's two things you can do the second you import your footage and that's interpret your footage and create proxies of it. And these two steps are super short and simple and they're gonna save you a disproportionately high amount of time later in the edit. Interpreting your footage is great if you're shooting in slow motion. So for example, I shoot in 60 frames per second for a lot of my clips, and then I edit in 24 frames per second. So I'm slowing those clips down to 40% speed. One way you can do that is by putting that 60 frames per second clip on a 24 frames per second timeline, and then slowing it down to 40%. And it's not that bad. You're not really gonna notice any problems. You'll probably have very smooth, perfect slow motion until you wanna do something like put that on a different sequence with a different frame rate or create an After Effects composition of that clip. You might run into some problems because your clip frame rate and your timeline frame rate are different. Interpreting your footage solves that problem because you're basically taking that clip and slowing it down before it even gets to the timeline. So by the time you start editing it, it's basically a 24 frames per second clip that when you view it, the motion is gonna be 40% speed. And the way to do this is super simple. You just select all those 60 frames per second clips in the media bin, right click, go to modify, hit interpret, and interpret them to 24 frames per second. 
that simple. Once you've done that, you can create proxies of those exact same clips. And proxies are basically just lower resolution previews of your footage that Premiere uses while you're editing and then swaps out for the full resolution footage when you export. These are gonna save you a ton of time no matter what, but especially if you're working with very high resolution footage like 4K or even like raw footage because it's a lot easier for Premiere to render that because it's a lower resolution more compressed preview, it's gonna save you a ton of time because you're not gonna be putting up with that lag that you get in Premiere. Because we all know Premiere does not do a very good job of processing your clips quickly. It's not the most powerful software on the market, but that is not what this video is about. The process of setting up proxies for your own workflow can be a bit extensive. There's a lot of things you have to get right, like setting up your presets correctly and getting all these certain settings right so that it actually works smoothly. So I'm not gonna explain the entire process in this video. Instead, my guy Dunna has a great video that breaks down the entire process, tells you everything that I would have told you in this video. So I'm just gonna link that below. You can go check that out if you're interested in creating proxies of your footage. The one thing I will add is that if you're interpreting your footage like we discussed a minute ago, you're gonna have to interpret both the footage and the proxies or your footage is not going to line up and you're gonna have some syncing issues once you actually export, which is not what you want at all. Now comes the fun part. We've planned our edit, we've set our clips up correctly in the media bin, and now what we're gonna do is take those clips from the media bin, and we're gonna put them on the timeline. Exciting stuff. And this is where we get to talk about the selects timeline. And this is something that'll save you so much time when you're editing. Once I started doing this, I cannot go back to what I was doing before. So at the start of your project, make a timeline for your selects and put all of your selects on it. Selects basically just being the parts of the clip that you wanna use. So set the in point and the out point slap them all down on that timeline. Then once you've done your selects for all of the footage that you have to work with for that edit, make a new timeline for your actual video and then put the selects timeline below it. So you have this pancake timeline where you have two timelines stacked up. Then whatever clip you need for your main edit, you can go down to your selects timeline and just drag it up to the main timeline. And then if you delete that clip later on, you can go back to the selects timeline and get it back if you need it. The main benefit is of course that you have everything that you wanna use separate from everything that you don't. And if you delete something on your main timeline, you can always go back and get it. It's still there. And it's also just gonna save you a lot of time and be a lot more efficient to do all of your selects first and then start actually cutting the clips together into sequences. But we'll talk about that later. When you're editing your clip, you might wanna start adding some effects and color grading effects to those clips. And that can get a little tricky when you have a clip like this one where I have this one long clip and I'm chopping it up into like a hundred different segments. So how am I gonna grade that entire clip to look the same? And that's where the master clip comes in. And this is definitely the easiest way to apply effects to an entire clip, regardless of how many times you've cut it up into different parts of your timeline. So basically just go up to your effects controls tab, or if you're in Lumetri color, go to the Lumetri tab, go up to the very top and switch to master. And then any effect that you add under that master tab is not only going to apply to that selection, but to the entire clip, regardless of where it is on your timeline. And that's great for something like this because I can basically just grade one clip and if it's set to master, then it's gonna grade this entire shot all over my timeline. A technique that can have a similar application is using nested sequences. And these can do the same function as that master clip, but they also have a few other nifty uses for your project. For example, when I edit my audio in Adobe Audition, I'll first nest the audio and then duplicate it and mute the duplicated track and then edit the other one in Audition. So if I get back to Premiere after using Audition and I realize that I screwed something up, then I can delete that one and replace it with the one that hasn't been in Audition yet and give it another try. Same thing goes for an After Effects composition. Nest the clip, duplicate it, edit one in After Effects, and if you realize that you messed up, then you always have the other one that you can just go back to and have that starting point. I actually made an entire video about nested sequences talking about these techniques and a few others as well. So if you wanna check that out, click right up here. And finally, this isn't like an editing technique where it's like press this button or do this thing in Premiere, but it's more just 
an overall general thing to keep in mind that'll save you time and that's to batch your editing process. So if you have 200 clips that you're working with, don't take like five and do selects for those five shots and then put them on your timeline and then grade three of them and then add sound design to two. It's just not that efficient. Instead, try and batch these different parts of the process together. So for example, doing all of the selects up front and then doing a rough cut of your entire project without worrying about grading or effects, transitions, sound design. Doing this allows you to get into a flow for each different stage of the process and spend less time transitioning in between something. I mean, you're just not gonna be as creative for a given part of the process if you're thinking about sound design, color grading, transitions, visual effects, selects, all at the same time. Anyways, that's all I have to say for this one, but I wanna hear from you as well. So what's the most important part of your editing workflow to help save you time? What's something you've learned that totally transformed that workflow for you and that you can never go back on? Comment below, let me know, and let's learn something from each other in this video beyond just what I'm sharing with you myself. But I hope you've enjoyed this video, learned something from it. If you did, do feel free to share your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel, or following me on Instagram if you like pretty pictures. I am at Aiden Robbins right there. But I hope you enjoyed this one. Keep creating and I'll see you in the next one.